Yep, yep, that's right. Batch number 86 today. We're doing a blood orange 10 gallon batch. We got the two cans sitting out here, and I forgot to turn the pump off that's making a humming noise. So, yeah, we'll be doing the 10 gallon batch of one of our blood oranges just to change up a little recipe, just a little bit, not too much. Why wouldn't I? added our potassium metabisulfate uh, two quarter tablespoons just a as part of our water treatment here it's nothing more than a Camden tablet so we just buy it in a more bulk form it's cheaper so after that we uh, I use a pH balancer it's, not, it's a malic acid so we're doing the pH adjustment right now Everything else seems to be right in line in the water, so we're going to get one more pH adjustment, then we're ready to go in. Redemption is the name of this blood orange beer we're making. Redemption. Go oh, easy, honey, because we get a stuck knife. We're just heavy. I have to part the other way. All right, from the, uh, I forget the name of this. All right, back to the uh, Blood Orange Redemption. We call this one Redemption. Uh, we came in a little low on the uh, mash, so we uh, what we're doing is a decoction. You guys out there know what that is. You take some of the grains out, and you reheat them to a higher level, and you stick it right back into the mash tun. So right now we're under like a, Return it after you get the higher temperatures back to the sacrification level for the sugars, you know how that goes. <clears throat> so we're off with the uh, Verloft here. So off to the boil kettle, one of them, we're going to do a batch sparge, I have the water in the, uh, in the big tank over here, yeah, with up the temperature about 160, you can't see 170 right now, a little on the high side, but by the time we get her in there should be good to go. Alright, the uh, blood orange. Redemption is uh, draining to the, the word is draining to the two kettles. I'm going to transfer it to the big kettle in a minute. We're going to add the rest of the sparge water to the mash tun and get this show on the road. So that's what we're going to do right now is uh, 
get the sparge water in there and get the show on the road. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? It'll take forever here sometimes. So yeah, we're gonna set the mash tun on the ground. <laughs> and then we're gonna closed. the valve is closed. And we're gonna slowly add our sparge water so we don't disturb the green back because I don't have my spoon. We'll fill it up with the rest of the sparge water, not that it's going to matter. All right, let's go, honey. We're going to, no, get out. I'll get splashed. So we're doing a batch sparge. That's why we're just going to fill, fill the tank back up like this again and then drain it. You don't have to worry about where the water's going, really. Batch 86, blood orange redemption. The rest of the sparge water's in the mash tun. Temperature's up to... Uh, 152, beautiful. Uh, we're gonna dump our first runnings. If the dog don't start drinking it, Mr. Rupert, say, hey. hey, no vert for you. Work is okay, but no vert. So I'm gonna dump this into the boil kettle. Nice. <clears throat> oh, my back. So, so far we gathered, what do we got? About seven gallons. Let's hope we did our calculations right on this batch. It's coming up to a boil. At about 185 degrees someplace in there right now. The buckets I'm gonna use are full of star sand right now. And this one I got the work chiller sanitizing itself. I do that all the time, I haven't had a problem. A lot of guys will go put them in the boil. This one's full of uh, fresh star sand. So two fresh star sands, and leftover star sand from a couple weeks ago. We end up putting it back in that bucket and saving it. Then uh, we use it again and again. How you doing? Why wouldn't I? Because you can do that. And we're uh, we're saving money by doing that. You take your pH, take a pH test of your star sand as long as she's down into the three point two range or below she's good to go never had a problem wait for this hot break to happen before i dump over and i might come over oh man he really tested me and my first edition of hops in my hand here there we go so we just put the uh 3.3 ounces of citra hops in here i don't know if i recorded it so at the hot break was achieved that those are in 3.3 ounces of citra to start the boil off here. She's starting to get a nice rolling boil there. We're going to uh, drive off these uh, proteins. So yeah, we're going to mess out here, but we're getting going, cleaning stuff up bit by bit. So in a long brew day, a 10 gallon, uh, 10 gallon batch is always just a little bit harder. Of course, it takes a little bit longer for the water to heat up. Uh, that was it. it. Took me about an hour to heat up the water. So the last 15 minutes of the boil has arrived. Timer just went off. Amarillo, uh, two ounces of Amarillo, I'm going into the uh, Blood Orange Redemption beer. I guess we named it Redemption. I'm going to tie it over to the same handle here. Have a nice boil off rate. We started at 12, or just about down to 11 in uh, 15 minutes. I got to get the Irish moss in here. It's over on the shelf there. So it means I got to walk back there and do that. So I might as well do that now. Well, for a 10 gallon batch, that's about what I want. So Irish moss is in. That's for clarifying of the beer. Helps it settle out and clarify it. And, uh, you gotta open that with scissors here. This package hasn't been opened yet, my yeast nutrient. So I gotta get some of that in. Oh, here we go. Flame out. Flame out. This brew is over. Work chiller going in. Hit the 
hat bags out. Both of them. No animals were no animals were hurt in the production of this this beer making. Uh, <laughs> I didn't do it on that one. Huh. No animals were hurt. So okay, so here's how it works. I got this cheap cheap garden valve, plastic valve from an old hose. Back to the days when I used to keep everything. I hooked that to the work chiller inlet. I can shut it off in the house or in the, in the drew shop here. Up to the work chiller, it comes in, comes out. Comes down my drain hose and then I, I got this old pool hose here. I just got it wired with a little piece of uh, like copper wire. Mechanics wire, I guess you'd call it. And it goes down the tube there. And it just runs out the garage door. Yeah, it, it works good. You don't have to go outside and turn the, the valve on the main thing anymore. It's, it's kind of handy. You can hear it gurgling here, listen. Blood orange going in. I I spilled some. Sanitized all of that. So the blood orange is in. And fermenter number one. Oh. And I gotta get fermenter number two ready. As soon as I know I have the right uh, right amount of work in the bucket. Alright, we're just about there. The pitching on the yeast in fermenter number one is all going in right now. Just sprinkle it on top. That's all you need to do with USO5 yeast. Take your cover, put it on, and that one's done. So the blood orange is going to go in. I'm going to spill it on myself. <clears throat> and number two, fermenter number two. Oh, my back. What was the final gravity? 1066. Good. And what this is going to be a little higher. Good beer. Clean that out for a while. It's time to tilt. And if we did it right, we should have just the right amount on this one. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. And that's done. gallons it usually takes a little bit longer and I think it has something to do with your age sometimes it's even longer I always fill my bubble my air locks with sanitizer Yeah, I think you need that as well. 